Hello everyone, and welcome to Coyotes and Crows, a the, a, the Cosmic Veil adventure that will be happening today. Uh, I am joined wonderfully in this lovely Monday, October the 4th. I got that wrong on the Twitter post, sorry about that. Uh, I'm joined today by Freak Wolf, uh, who will be playing a character by the name of Ian Galen. Oh, actually, that's something we were figuring, uh, we were wondering about today. If uh, if it is Ian or Ian, either is fine. I don't know. I find it to be like regional accent. Well, either is fine. All right. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, we also have uh, Lucian playing November Lee Kelly. We will be having Meta playing si uh, Silas Crandall. And Theo playing Vaughn McKittrick. I finally figured out how to pronounce that name. <laughs> Sorry, I chose a hard one. That's all right. I will choose a harder name throughout the, <laughs> throughout the game, so it's all fine. Uh, if you're all wondering where the hell is D&D, don't worry about that. Every once in a while, it's good to shake things up a little. So we are doing Call of Cthulhu. But... Even though we are using the Call of Cthulhu system to play this game, 7th edition, this is not going to be a Call of Cthulhu game per se. So, those of you who have, like, uh, already in your minds what a Call of Cthulhu game is supposed to be like, try to suspend your, you know, your foreknowledge of how things work, because it's going to be surprising for everyone. This is the first episode of a four-part Halloween special, so every, well, throughout this month we'll be playing games. It would be every Monday, but uh, next week is actually going to be happening on Sunday, so uh, schedules are also going to be shaken up a little. And then, after the game is streamed, we will all I will also be posting this game on VOD over at YouTube every Sunday, so you guys can keep it up with the game. So the last game will be played on the 25th, and will be uploaded to the YouTubes at... October the 31st, which happens to be Halloween. Ooh. Fantastic. One day after my birthday. <laughs> so, uh, now that everyone is ready, we can uh, start to describe a little bit of the game. So, welcome and good evening, children. We reunite in this glorious occasion to regale on a tale of friendships and families foes and flames, of secrets and suspense, of revenge and redemption, in the untamed Wild West, in the first chapter of a story known as Coyotes and Crows. Deep within the Colorado Plains lies the town of Devilbrook, home to many families and businesses, many honest men and women who have worked hard to earn a good life for themselves. But not all of them are so honest. A cunning, a cunning man, entrepreneur by trade, fencer by virtue, has amassed a small fortune and a, very, and a few trusty allies in this town as well. Life was really good for Phineas Roscoe, but misdeeds and transgressions often have a way of catching up with you. Later, in May 1885, four friends of Roscoe gathered in town ready to go to their monthly hunting trip, where they could discuss their matters away from prying, prying eyes, what sort of deals they would be doing for Phineas this time around in exchange for a little share of his fortune, for behind their candid friendship lies a little monetary incentive to bend the laws every once in a while. Enjoy the show and prepare your minds for adventures in a world beyond imagination that starts right now as we lift the Cosmic Veil.
So, like I said, we all start in uh, later in May. Uh, it's spring-ish? I think it's springish time over there in Colorado. Things are good, as they usually are. Um, all of you have gathered in the town of uh, Devilbrook. Uh, I don't know if all of you live kind of far away from town, because the way this town works, this town is very small, and there's the usual commerces, businesses, uh, the, the church, the school, several shops and other things uh, in this little town. And most people, the ranchers and homesteaders, they live a little bit further away. Uh, hardly people live in the town itself. Except those who own businesses in there, of course. Uh, so, <coughs> most of you might be from... Uh, have a house or property slightly farther away. Or you might also just, you know, be in town and pay for lodgings on the... On the... What's it called again? Hotel? Yeah, on the on the hotel. Uh, with whatever you earn throughout your daily life. So. What? You, I mean, you are asking or? No, no. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm just describing. I'm also <laughs> setting things up here in the background, so I'm a, a, a little bit distracted. In any okay. case, all of you, every month or so, gather in Devilbrook. You come from far away or from the town itself. Uh, you gather near the uh, near the bridge to the river in the in the west street, waiting for each other to arrive. And then all five of you, November, Silas, Vaughn, and Ian, go over to a hunting trip along with your friend Roscoe. All four of you have arrived at this point, uh, but there's still no sign of your friend Phineas. Which is odd because he never really he never really is late and hardly ever misses any sort of commitment. And if he ever does, he usually lets you know in advance or sends someone else to let you know uh, at your earliest convenience. But this time around there has been no note, no warning, no nothing. We're all just gathered in town just waiting for a man that has not yet shown up. So, all of you are probably somewhat worried about this, but also, November, tell me, whenever your friends look at your face and at you in general, what do you look like? Oh, just as, as polished as I can manage to be, of course. Um, November is pretty short, he's probably about maybe like five foot three, five foot four, somewhere around there. Um, 37, so he's getting on a little bit, but he's not quite at middle age, although he constantly whines about the fact that he's probably closer to middle age than he would like to be. Um, mostly right now, he is repeatedly checking the pocket watch in his, in his coat pocket, just over and over, because as you said, Phineas is not normally one to be late or if he is he's usually kind enough to inform us and Silas whenever your friends look at you who do they see in other words what do you look like so uh, about six foot tall always wear my hat plays with cards in my hand usually a bit worn around the edges. Um, you can tell that I travel a lot. Always have a smile on my face for the person that I'm about to play cards with. Vaughn, you see in November slightly worried, checking his pocket watch constantly. You see Silas just fiddling with his cards on his hand, uh, uh, idly, just waiting. What do your friends see when they look at you? Vaughn looks mostly unconcerned by everything here. He's about five foot three as well, with uh, long brown hair to his shoulders. Uh, he's 
got a simple outfit on, vest. Uh, trying to put on a clean look, because he runs a clinic in town. He's always looked young without his beard. That's why he keeps it around. But he keeps the soft look as much as possible to put people at ease. And lastly, you see the same thing, Ian. You see Vaughn uh, smiling a little bit nervously. You know him well by now to, to know this about him. In fact, all of you know each other very well. And when your friends, all three of them, look at you, Ian, who do they see? Well, they see probably apparently the, uh, the biggest person of the group. Over two meters tall, or 6.6, from I'm mistaken, in American standards. And they see someone who was carved a little bit by the life of the farm. Got Carlos hands, uh, tired face, hair and beard, brown, reddish. But now he's mostly pinning a pen on his hand while he checks his book. He usually keeps just to scribe a little things he wants to remember later for his life as an author. Clothes-wise, he's just using plain comfortable things, such as shirt with... I forgot the word in English, I beg your pardon. Suspensorius. I forgot the uh, word in English. Suspenders. Suspenders, thank you very much. He's just wearing a, a plain shirt with suspenders, taking his careful to sit while he can before saving his energy before the hunt and looking around wondering if his friend was already showing and planning to make a visit of him so he just keeps ma uh, making mental notes of when they should go yep it takes about half an hour nearly an hour before all of you grow a little bit too impatient or maybe even concerned about uh, Phineas Roscoe not showing up. You all know where he lives. You usually don't go over there because his wife, uh, <laughs> uh, his wife Clara, usually isn't a big fan of all of you guys showing up all at once. Uh, she keeps saying, or at least you remember. Uh, Phineas telling you that she thinks that all four of you, all five of you, hanging out together is a little bit of a bad influence on their daughter Vivian, but you to avoid any sort of, you know, uh, house problems, all of you just wait in town now whenever you meet. But he has not shown up yet. It's still somewhat early ish in the morning. What do you guys want to do about that? Well, since it's somewhat of a common knowledge that it's not good to show all of us in the same place near the town because they think it's a bad influence, I would say that someone should just go there and see where is he. Seems like a good idea. It's not necessarily that it's a bad, no it's like bad, all of you showing up, it's just that you all started. Uh, showing up in town uh, because a couple times she complained. But yes, all of you know where they, or the Roscoes live. Shall we uh, draw straws to see who should be heading out that way? Always seems like a good plan. Well, I guess there's not much to do. We can follow. We can all go together to a certain distance, but then we just wait at the edges of his property, just to make sure Carla doesn't give him. Uh, a rough time. Yeah, we don't want her mad. That'll certainly mess up our hunting trip. <laughs> well, shall we? After you. Well, I guess we all thought of us head to the uh, Roscoe residence. Sure thing. So all four of you then pick up your things. Uh, you have on your person whatever it is that you think you have that is appropriate for your hunting trip. Uh, it is a common knowledge that you don't go hunting, hunting per se. Usually you do bring your hunting gear and every once in a while whenever the, the, the weather is great or some 
very good opportunity shows itself to you, you do take some time to go hunting, but mostly, you spend your time in this hunting trip talking business. Or rather, as you rather call it, talking shop. Because... You all know that Phineas works hard to look like an honest man, but he has a little bit of a work on the side. Every once in a while in November, you get in a little bit of trouble with your shenanigans. It's no, it's no secret to your friends that uh, you try to swindle people especially travelers that are just passing by on their way to some other town and whenever they, they stop by to rest, drink or, or talk with someone you immediately try to cook, to cook up a little scheme to relieve them of their money and every once in a while you do get caught and Phineas is always there to help you in one way or another <laughs> Silas you don't very much have a place of your own or a family of your own, so it's always in a way it's work but in another way it's also nice whenever Phineas reach out to you asking for your help with little odd jobs here and there not all of them exactly legal things that the most upstanding citizen would be doing but it gives you some money to, you know fill your belly and get you going for a, another while. Certainly the reason why I come by all the time. Vaughn, you are constantly uh, hired when Phineas uh, and your other three friends sometimes show up with suspicious injuries that would get a lot of questions asked in those most reputable establishments. So you certainly try your best to avoid, uh, well, you know, looking a little bit too, too suspicious and going to the Roscoe residence or to your friends' residence whenever they need a little bit of stitching up or, or healing. And you know that those suspicious injuries must be... You've treated enough of them to recognize uh, bullet wounds and knife stabs that should not have been there at all. And you, Ian, mm -hmm. constantly help Roscoe and your other friends get out of trouble as well. Since you write quite a lot and every once in a while publish some articles to the, uh, to the local, uh, not necessarily local newspaper, but uh, a newspaper that, that uh, gets published in Denver and makes its way over here. You... Every once in a while, Roscoe gets featured in an article written by you in which you paint him in the best possible light. To make sure that any person that might suspect him of any misbehavior actually don't suspect him at all. And your job, or rather, the reason why Phineas asks you so frequently to join up with him is to cook up some manner of story to dissuade others from looking a little bit too deeply into Phineas's life. Pretty much I'm a, I'm a alias maker. You're the one who's making sure that Roscoe is not uh, uh, in trouble all the time. So, all of you start just wandering uh, towards the Roscoe residence. Still not entirely 100% sure of where exactly it is. Uh, or, or rather, uh, what exactly is going on with him, with uh, with his delay. So you start slowly walking over there. Uh, it's It takes you guys back into the center of town and then down through the south main street. And then you walk for a little while uh, towards the Roscoe residence, uh, pondering what best to do. And when, whenever you get a little bit closer after walking for some 10-ish, 15-ish minutes, you see in the distance what appears to be a couple of men and a little girl that you recognize to be Vivian. You do not recognize this man. Mm -hmm. 
What do you think? A couple of friends of his? Um, Douglas. Yes. Um, by their, can I say, by their looks and their emotion that they are showing, can we deduce what's going on? Like, they are talking friendly. Does Vivian look uh, intimidated by them? Can we read the mood of the situation? Uh, you can attempt to read the mood. Uh, I will call this either a psychology or spot hidden. I'm not exactly hidden, so I'll take the psychology. No, no. Uh, spot spot hidden is the name of the skill for spotting things that are hidden from sight. Ah, well, very well then. So you have those two skills, psychology and spot hidden. You can take your pick and roll for it. Uh, well, spot hidden is a little higher, so let me see. I, I click it and nothing changes. Let me try again. Can we also make rolls for this? Sure. Uh, click the name of the skill. I believe that's how you roll. Yeah, I I choose to make a pop up to see how it works, but I guess it did not. Oh, fifty. All right. So, uh, Silas and Vaughn, or rather Silas, you were trying to to look for them, but. You're a little bit too distracted playing cards. You figure it's just a couple men. You maybe it's some new help that uh, Phineas has r hired. You don't know. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Vaughn, you're uh, at this time. You're thinking too much of where is Phineas himself to really uh, look into what's going on with them. You, uh, your mind is still on, on Phineas. You've mostly captured yourself away from the Roscoe family. You only have business with Phineas himself, not with uh, Clara or Vivian. However, Ian and November, the two of you noticed the most suspicious thing. These two men are wielding uh, revolvers in their hips, and they seem to have a knife in their hand as they are uh, talking to Vivian. You don't, you can't quite hear what they're talking because they're too far away, but you do see the the glint of the blade reflecting a little bit of sunlight in their hands, and you realize that, well, they are talking to a child, a 11, 12 years old child with, actually Vivian's more like uh, on her 14s, uh, they're talking to a child with weapons in their hands. Well, I, uh, as soon as I uh, noticed it, I, I mentioned to the guys that it uh, looks like trouble, they are armed. And I already make my way towards Vivian and the guy. Walking, at yeah. least. I was going to say, roughly how far off are they? See if I can sneak around them. Uh, these, uh, they seem to be about, like, you're still some... Uh, 50 to 80 yards from them. Uh, you have noticed them. They seem a little bit too focused on the girl, and they uh, they have looked over at your direction, and they have noticed people. But because you're on the road, and you have to then take a take, take a right to enter into the the little uh, the little earth road that uh, leads to the Roscoe residence is itself. Uh, you're not entirely sure if they if they think that you're coming for them or if you're going just along the road, just a group of travelers. Uh, but yeah, you're about some 60 uh, yards away from them. So, uh, Silas, you're trying to sneak closer to them. I am. Cool. Make a stealth check. Why don't you? Why don't I? Ren, that is a success. Uh... As everyone starts to get a little bit closer, you break off from your group and starts heading off into the... Uh, 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 towards the side to try and flank them. You also kind of get low on the ground, use the use the irregular hills uh, to your advantage to really hide in the... hide in the foliage. There's not a lot of grass in this region, the, in the Colorado Plains. It's mostly just dry grass. So... You're mostly just using the ground itself and uh, to hide the hills. Sure, sure. Uh, and you get to approach them. Make a listen check. Ooh, good. 
By the way, only Silas gets to do this because of how close he's getting. Oh. What we've stepped. Sorry. On. It's okay. Uh, Silas, thanks for that hard success. You see that they're talking to one another, mentioning. Well, I don't know what's going on in there, but that gunshot didn't sound very pretty. And to be fair, Thomas is taking a while. What should we do? Should we go after them? And the other guy, no, 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 give it a moment. If Thomas needs our help, he'll come in here. Besides, we got a little bit of entertainment here, don't we, darling? And you see that the girl, Vivian, she, uh, she's, she's very quietly whimpering. She's trying her best not to make any, any noise or movement, but you can see that she's guarded and, uh, it's very quietly just whimpering. See if I can make my way back to the others to tell them what's going on. Uh, something that's going on on the inside, a gunshot. Sure. Uh, none of you had heard this gunshot at all on your way here. So whatever this gunshot was, you imagine it happened a while ago. Anyways, you, you, you keep on just uh, crawling down the hill back to reconvene with everyone else and let them know of what just happened. Yeah, she's uh, she's held there. She seems quite guarded and they're calling for Thomas that's inside and something about a gunshot or chasing the others. I I think foul play has really happened here to Phineas. Well, uh, let me talk to him. See, uh, see if I can figure out what's going on. Uh, one of you want to come with me just in case Vivian needs to make a run for it? I'll come along with you. Uh, I'll um, go along as well. I'm not enjoying two guys with a little girl. Little girl. I'll, I'll watch up here. I'll keep a beat on them with my gun. Alrighty. Uh, in that case, then I'll, I'll slowly make my way up the road. And when I think they're within, like, rough voice-carrying distance... I'll just basically yell as loud as I can. Afternoon, gentlemen, and well, hello there, Vivian. Good to see you again. You want to go tell your mama that we're here? Uh, the the two men they look at you, uh, very guarded. And little Vivian, she also looks at you. You see that her eyes go wide, and she starts to think of saying something, but uh, she doesn't. Uh, one of the one of the gentlemen he looks down at you. They both uh, kind of hold their hands very close to their body, that's so you can't see that they're wielding knives anymore. Mm -hmm. You know they're there, but you, you, it's not visible now. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the gentlemen just says, "Hey there, good morning to you. Uh, I'm really sorry, but our friend here is a little bit busy and he's not taking visitors today." Oh, is that so? And what business do you guys run? And while I'm asking that, I move closer to Vivian. And I I try to just hold her close to me, you know, like as if I'm I'm friendly and safe. I guess. Even though her mother doesn't really consider us good good friends or good influence, I guess she knows that we are his her par uh, her father's friends. Uh, you see that whenever you try you start to approach and kind of like beckon, uh, Vivian she recognizes all four of you and she seems to make a move, kind of steps forward to to go to you. But uh, one of the guys he puts his hands on her shoulder and kind of kind of grips it tightly, keeping her close, and says, "Oh, don't worry, we're just here to talk to old Phineas about a little loan that you know has to be paid." Nothing went wrong, just the usual. So all of you move to about like 10 yards away from these people. These two That's men and Vivian. 10 yards, I think. And Silas, you're staying a little bit further away uh, with your gun. What gun I is am. it that you pull out? Uh, it's the only gun that I have. It's my uh, 44 Remington. I have trained on one of the men. Sure. Uh, they just look at you and kind of pull Vivian a little bit closer to them and say, "Oh, but I will let you. I will let oh the, our old friend here knows that you've uh, 
You've shown up. You can go on alone now. Oh, oh. no, it, it, it's quite all right. As, uh, as one of his uh, business partners, I'm sure we can discuss a, any loan that he's taken out personally. Could I use, like, a charm roll for that? Um... To basically make it seem like I'm I'm working with him. Make a fo a fast talk. Okay. A uh, fast talk. Whoa! Ooh. Wow, that's that, a good roll. That's an extreme success. Uh, as you say that, they look at each other and then look back at you with a little smile on their face. You see that their po posture relaxes a little bit. Ha, huh, is that so? What, uh... Do you have anything on you, then? Some money? Because, you see, your old pal here, he is, uh... He owes us a little bit. Uh, I'm sure it's nothing I can't take care of. Um, here, why don't we, uh... Why don't we find a, a quieter place to discuss this, rather than out in the open on a road where anybody can drop by? They look around to the both sides. The, the road is pretty empty. There's nothing going on, really. Uh, Roscoe lives a little bit far far away, so it's pretty empty itself. But there's something about the way that you deliver this line and the jingling of your of your pockets or something that makes mm -hmm. them makes them their their eyes shine a little bit. You imagine with greed, and mm -hmm. they look at each other, and then at Vivian says. Well, all right then. Well, come on over. Let's see. Uh, let's see just how much weight you can take off of your friend's shoulder for him. Sure. Uh, you're gonna like not to be rude or anything, but um, Vivian's mama doesn't exactly like us being around, so you, you may have to let her go for a bit, at least you know before we start discussing business. She thinks we're a bad influence or something. Can you believe? Um. Uh... Well, right after he says that, I... It, it is a that silly attempt to signal for our friend hidden and armed. But I raised my hands like in a... Like I was surrendered, you know? Palms forward, hands over my shoulders. But I talk. I, 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 I'm stiff in a stiff position like I was being surrendered. Just trying to signalize that we're in trouble. And I just say something casual, like, Believe me, gentlemen, hell doesn't want that woman back because Satan would lose her job. So, <laughs> let's keep civil. Uh, let, let's keep a civil around her, please. Sure. Uh, go ahead and make a fast talk check. I'll give you a bonus die because they are so into this whole thing already. Oh, crap. Uh, how? Let me see. Regular... Uh, you can put a, pl a plus one there on the little slider that gives you one bonus die. Okay, then. Well, 25. Well, uh, what is this spider? Is oh, fail. Yeah, it's a failure. <clears throat> okay, then. They think a little bit about what you have said, and they start to consider... They look at the, the young girl at Vivian's head. Well, you know what? Maybe you can help your daddy with, you know, accounting. I think that doing business right here, it's all right. And then they, uh, one of the guys, he starts to uh, sheet back his knife. You don't see that he's holding a knife uh, and, and sheeting it into his, uh, into his side pouch. But you know what he's doing. He, he sheets it and then just kind of walks a little bit closer to the house itself. It's a big two-story house. It goes over close, looks over at one of the windows, kind of taps on it a little bit, uh, kind of just keeps looking around. And then you see that he does a little bit of a motion, kind of lifts his hands as if signaling something, and then comes back inside. Yeah, sure. Uh, come on, show us the goods. I don't know if you're the kind of person to be walking around with. Five hundred dollars, but if you are, show us them greens. Hmm. Uh, have they let go of Vivian while they're doing this, or is it the other one that's holding on to Vivian? They are no longer holding on to her. 
She hasn't okay. make any any move any any sort of motion to go closer to you, but you see that they have relaxed a little bit and they have let go of her. Hmm. But she's still like stood right between them. I'm I'm assuming. Yeah, she's sort of between them. You you imagine that now uh, they're no longer holding her, but she's still sort of between them. I see. All right. Uh, hmm. I'm just trying to think of a way that we can get Vivian away safely, because I, I have roughly about half of what they need on me, and I can get the rest very easily. So, where's the greens? Well, I try to stall for some time, and I start to get... Um, I very slowly move my hand to one of my pockets, and I start to grab some of my my cash. I love what I'm saying. Well, he is, man. I mean, like you said, people don't walk around with five... Uh, I'm sorry, was it 500 or 5,000? 500. Oh, like I okay. said, people don't, don't go walking around with $500 inside their pocket. So they can... Hold on a minute. And I keep... I, ke I slowly grab some of my cash and I start counting the for them. Just trying to stall for some time. See if we can... See what we can find some opportunity to help her. Uh, November takes a moment to fish through his pockets, uh, unclips his pocket watch, and takes roughly about two hundred and forty dollars out of his pocket. It's not five hundred off the bat, but if you'll give me about two minutes to run back to the bank and withdraw the other half, I'm sure we can get this all cleared up. Uh. Sure, as you start to stall for some time, is Vaughn doing anything as you're close with them? Vaughn has been standing there silently, just observing the situation. He's most likely trying to take steps to get not exactly closer to them, but kind of to the side of them, without being too noticeable about it. Oh, sure, their their eyes are just focused on the money right now. They they you are able to shift to the side. Uh, fairly easily, and uh, as soon as you pull out the the money and kind of make a motion to to give it to them, they they saw that you counted all them all your money all together, and it doesn't come close to being the five hundred dollars that they wanted, and they start to get a little bit impatient with you all. It's half of it in my silver pocket watch, so you can hang on to that for a couple minutes while I run back to the bank and get the other half. Well, that's quite a lot of money, but I'm afraid it's not enough for, uh, just to get your friend clear just yet. Uh, everyone go ahead and make a spot hidden check again. Okay. Because, you see, your friend here owes us a big lot. Ooh, a critical. Ah, it was one off. Uh, a critical is actually only uh, if you roll a zero one. Ah, yes, I'm sorry. Three stars is an extreme success, which is very good. So, I'm going to use a luck point to drop that down to twenty five. Uh, sure. Go ahead and do that. So, what happens is that you, Vaughn, and you, Ian, uh, both of you notice that this man, they, uh. As they move a little bit closer, you can see that they have some, uh, that they have a uh, very strong of alcohol on them, and you see that these men are very rugged. They don't look like businessmen. You get the sense that they might be bandits of some sort. Uh, Ian, you, however, as you're just kind of stalling for time and looking around. Uh, you do see that uh, at some moment you just see what appears to be like a couple of, uh, a couple figures uh, moving in a window on the upper floor, and at some moment the angle is not very good for you to really notice this, but you see that uh, there's just a hand with a knife that tries to come down onto someone, and if someone holds that arm kind of blocking the knife from coming down, then they start struggling, and they move out of you. Okay. Uh, when I see that, I, I'm i not the best person at keeping their cool because of my 
low appearance. Uh, at the moment I saw that at the corner of my eye, I I'm holding the money on my hand, and when I'm I quickly gesture to give it to him, but when I get my hand close to it, I flick the notes on his face. All right. Sure, you flick it on his face. Uh, definitely bamboozles him. Yeah, and at that right uh, right later, I with my free hand, I go straight to his throat to push him against the. He's he's in front of a wall. Am I, am I right? Uh, yes, he's close to a wall. Yes. Yeah, so I make the movement. I quickly use my free hand and grab his throat and press him against the the wall. At the same time, I I said uh, I I shout, Benedict, they're killing they're killing Phillips, and I I try to hold one of the men. Okay. And I ask the others to take action. I'm going to shoot the other one then. Okay, so, uh, Ian, I need you to go ahead and make a brawl check. It's going to be opposed by my brawl check. Do I get any advantage by distracting the, the guy? Mm, sure, sure. You get a bonus die. Yay. Hmm. How much was that? 30, that's a success. Let me roll 80 hundred and see what comes out on the other side. Yeah, that's a failure. Uh, so you quickly move forward, grapple this guy, grabbing him by the throat and pushing him against the wall, uh, trying your best to kind of hold him in there, and you just turn around to the side and yell, Bandits! They're killing Philip! November, Vaughn, the both of you uh, start to make some sort of preparation now, seeing this happen, to you know get ready for what appear apparently is going to become some manner of combat. And you, Silas, you take a shot. Uh, because you have been uh, training your aim on them for a while, you also get a bonus die. Yay! So make the roll. Uh, evidently you didn't give me any ammo. Yeah, all of you have full ammunition for your guns. So if you go on your combat, you see that there's a little uh, a, a little revolver wheel. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Closer to the bullets, just click that to reload your guns. Everyone do that. Okay. 37. 37, yes, you definitely hit. Uh, I imagine you're hitting the other guy, right? That is correct, the one that's not being grappled. Sure, uh, roll your damage. Five points of damage, cool. Uh, the meat. <laughs> yeah. The combat dummies are being shot at. Oh no. Okay, cool. So this is going to be a combat. All four of you against these uh, two goons. And... Unlike regular role-playing games in Call of Duty, you do not roll for initiative. Your initiative is going to be just your your dexterity uh, 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 characteristic. Oh, okay. Plus 50 to that if you have a weapon ready and you're using it on your turn. So, November, what's your dexterity? Uh, dexterity is 85. Cool. Silas? 65. Vaughn? 65. Ian? 45. Alright. Okay, so... This goon, he takes 5 points of damage from your shot. Uh, that is, as it happens, as they call it, a major wound. So... He what? is not expecting at all to be shot, he just kinda... Uh, he takes it to his shoulder, loses his balance and falls down on the ground a little bit. Still kinda shocked from what just happened. So, that's what happens. We're going down into combat round again. Silas, you're up first because you have your weapon ready. What are you doing? They told me that uh, people were being attacked in the house, that Phineas is being attacked. So, I want to rush in. Sure. Uh, you rush in. Uh, you're still a little bit far far away, so you lose all of your time just, uh, just running. Right. So yeah, that'll be it for you for now. Uh, next up is November. Uh, alrighty. Um, can we move and shoot in the same round, or is it we would have to pick between the two? No, yeah, you can move and shoot, yes. Okay. Uh, in that case, I'm going to get closer to the house um, so that I can basically assist uh, Silas. 
and take a shot with the 44 Colt in my pocket. Um, at the non-restrained guy. Okay, the one that's on the ground. Sure, uh, go ahead and yep. uh, make your attack roll. Because this guy is like he's fallen on the ground, he's prone. You get a, a bonus die on your shot. Okay. Uh -huh. Success. Yeah, go ahead and uh, roll for damage. Okay. That's a total of nine. Boy. That, that would kill me instantly. <laughs> right? Yeah, does this, did this guy even have a chance? Jeez. Uh, it's a d10. You could have rolled a one. But yeah, you just... Uh, as you see that this guy falls to the ground, you just quickly pull out the gun from your pocket, you aim at him, you see that he's making a move to go for the gun on his own pocket, but before you do, you just kind of shot him clear on the head, he, you just splatter his brains over the over the grass, and you just dash towards the, the manor. At this point, Vivian just kind of runs behind uh, Yuvon, or rather, she, she runs towards the road, more so, but she's behind you, and... You know, she, I was gonna say I I yell after her to go and get help from I'm assuming there's a sheriff in town. Yeah, so you yell and she just starts dashing towards the towards the town. Okay. Uh, so, yes. No, it's not my turn. So I guess I'll I'll wait. Sure. So no, Vaughn, you're up now. What are you doing? Well, Lillian took care of herself, so I don't have to, or Vivian took care of herself, so I don't have to worry about her now. Um, I'm going to approach the house and try the front door. Sure. Uh, you go over to the house, you try the front door. You don't even need to try because the door is a slightly ajar, so you kind of just push it open and you see that there's the, the main hall of the house. There's a staircase going up and just as you saw... Ju well, just as you... Just as November shot the guy, and Silas also shot the guy, and you go into the house, you hear uh, a yell of help coming from upstairs. You recognize it should be a woman's voice. You think it's probably Clara. I will head in that direction while pulling my revolver from my pocket, my uh, holster. Sure. So you start to just you dash into the house. You quickly go towards the stairs and start to climb it. You make all the way up to the uh, to the second floor, just as November and Silas comes in through through the door. And now is the other goon because he goes before you. Ian. He has a higher dexterity. Fair enough. He is going to go ahead and try and. Uh, since he's being grappled, he's going to try and pick out his, his knife from his pocket and try to stab you. Mm -hmm. The way that combat in Call of Cthulhu works is a little bit crazy, because whenever someone does something, the other person has a chance to react. These guys didn't get a reaction because they didn't know you guys were going to attack them. So that's why you, you got a free. But this guy is going to try and stab you with his, uh, with his stabby knife. You, Ian have the option to try and fight back or dodge. I'm gonna try to hold... Uh, uh, first of all, I am. I can see the sheet of his knife. Yes. Uh, as soon as I see his hand move into the sheet, I wanna grab his wrist. So uh, he cannot uh, stab me or even take off his knife. Okay, sure. So, uh, <clears throat> it, this is gonna be a brawl check anyways. Okay. And I'm still iron gripping his throat. Doesn't sure. Hoping that works. Alright. So yeah, it's going to be an opposed brawl check. Go ahead and roll for it. Okay, regular? Yes, regular. Ooh. Wow, look at your rolls. God damn, that's a good one. Yeah, I guess that luck, 75 luck really meant something. Nice. Uh, the only way he beats you is if he rolled a critical or a 0-1. Yeah, there's no hope for that. He rolls a 40, that's a regular success, but the way that it happens in Call of Cthulhu is that uh, your level of success has to be higher than the, your opponent to beat them. So, no. You beat him. You see that he's, you, you're, you have a strong grip on his on his neck. You see that he's going for his knife and then you quickly just kind of just grab his wrist 
lift up his hand. Uh, he is gripping the knife, but he just keeps slamming his hand against the, the, the frame of the house uh, until he drops it. And the knife just clatters to the ground, and now he, you're, you're dual grappling him, I guess. Well, that's so far so good. And that's it for his turn. He can't do anything else. So, you're up. Ian, what do you do with your turn? Well, I'm not really doing any damage to him, even though I'm suffocating him and everything, right? Okay, you're, you're trying to suffocate him then. No, no, I'm, I'm just asking, because since I'm not stabbing or, or shooting him, I'm not sure how my melee damage is, is being countered, if any, is happening. Just wondering. Uh, Well, just tell me what you want to do, and I'll figure it out. Okay, well, the... The grab on his throat is not doing anything. Of course, his hand's not broken or anything, I guess. I guess I'm gonna take the chance and just give him the good old knee on the knee on the junk. Uh, sure. The the chokehold uh would be doing something, but it didn't do anything until now because it wasn't your turn per se. Okay then. So you can either kick him on the balls or try and choke him. Up to you. Well, um. For him to, to properly choke him, I'll have to use both our hands, which is not advised. So I'll just disorient him with a good old Neon the Shinies. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, make a make a brawl check. Uh, any advantage by the situation? Uh, no, not in this case. Ah, oh, very well then. Never hurts to ask. Ooh, pretty bad. Yeah, he will try and fight back. I, on the other hand, rolled a 24. Yeah, he succeeded. So, you try and go for his his gonads uh, with a, with your knee. He sees that that's coming up. Uh, with his free hand, he just sort of blocks your, uh, blocks your knee and kind of directs it to the side a little bit. Uh, and you lose a little bit of balance, and that's all he needs to manage to slip away from your grip. Oh, is that so? Okay, then. Yeah. He's still a little bit disoriented, he's still kind of getting his balance, he doesn't have his knife. The only thing he has is his weapon on his hip, and uh, you're both incredibly close to one another, within like uh, a y one yard less than that even. And that's gonna be it for your turn, unless you want to move? Uh, no, I, w I would say that I would even prefer to keep my grip on him instead of maintain my balance, but that's... I failed twice, that per se, so... Now, I'm gonna keep close to him, not make... not let him draw anything. I have the advantage of size. Sure, okay. Uh, everyone has their weapon ready at, at this point, so November, you go first. What do you want to do? Okay. Um, so we know you... one person's gone upstairs. Yeah, you uh, have you have just crossed the threshold of the of the door. You see okay. Vaughn up the stairs, going towards a room. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm assuming there's like rooms off to our left as well, right? Or right, like basically uh, off to the side on this level. Yeah, there's rooms to both sides of the house, but you only heard this yell coming from one specific room. Hmm. Upstairs. All right. Um, yeah, I might as well. I'll run up the stairs after Vaughn. Sure. So I imagine all three of you run up the stairs, Silas, Vaughn, and November. Yes. Okay. So all three of you start to run uh, towards the room where you heard the yell from. You just uh, the door is closed, but it doesn't take the. Uh, it, it, all it takes is just one kick, a good kick to the door, and since you're all running anyways, you uh, you barely even break stride to just kick down the door. As you kick down the door, the, what the three of you, November, Silas, and Vaughn, see is uh, a body laying on the ground, and then you see that uh, uh, there's a guy who you don't recognize. He has a, he has a knife on his hand, he was trying to uh, apparently try and uh, stab someone and you see that this someone is Vivian she's all using all of her strength to hold off his uh, his hand and as soon as you come in and all of you look at her or well, look at them and they look at you uh, she uses this little moment of distraction to also kick him in the balls <laughs> and 
just uh, just uh, as she does, the guy he just kind of lets go of her briefly, and when she starts to run towards you, uh, the guy just kind of quickly grabs her by the hair and makes a motion to go to stab her on the neck. But it's still your turn, November. What are you doing? Um. Hmm. Let me check something real quick. All three of you are in the are in the door with your weapons ready. There's a body in the ground and a woman about to get stabbed. I see. Uh, well, it's worked once, so let's do it again. Um, I'm going to try to take as clear a shot as I can with the 44 Colt, but I'm aiming for a non-lethal shot, like basically like shoulder or uh, leg, basically anything I can reach that will not instantly kill him. <laughs> not this time. Sure. Uh there's a little issue that is uh, Clara is in front of him, so you will have a penalty ah. die on your shot if you roll an if you roll fumble, which is uh, 95 or higher. You hit her instead. Go for it. Okay. No pressure. So, all right. It's a failure, but it's not a drastic. Yeah. You try to aim at her, you're very concerned about hitting... Well, you're, you're aiming at the guy, you're very concerned with hitting her. Uh, you're not super sure on your shot and you shoot, and it goes wide. It crashes the window behind her. Uh, the window uh, 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 right above you, Ian. You just see that a loud gunshot goes off, the window breaks, and you are rained with uh, shards of glass. Uh, next up is both Silas and Vaughn. What are you guys doing? I'll go by alphabetical order and say that Silas go first. Alright. Uh, I see her there. Uh, I'm going to try to knock him out with the butt of my gun uh, so that he can't stab her. Uh, all of you used all of your movement just running to the door. You can't get oh, any closer. I. Then I'll have to shoot him. Sure, go for it. Same thing, you get a penalty dice. If you roll 95 or higher, you hit her instead. Nope, but I failed. Yet another failure. Uh, you two are too concerned with hitting her. Your shot goes wide. Uh, last but not least, Vaughn. Yeah, seems like everyone's taking shots here. Uh, looks like I'm going to have to take one as well. Sure, go for it. You have a penalty die. Well, because I can't get any close. No. Yeah, you can't. Come on. Yep, no. You... It's just a regular miss. I'll do you all a devil's bargain. One of you can spend an amount of luck point equal to... to the difference between your failed roll to have hit the shot instead, if you want. That would be 13 points for me. Over 20 for me. Well, I think that'd be 12 for me. It would be uh, 18 points for you, Vaughn. I should I should keep in mind that if all of you fail the shot, she's gonna die. Or at least gonna be painfully stabbed. So... Keep that in mind. Well, I'm I'm okay spending the luck if it if it gets her out of harm's way. Sure. So on that shot where you missed, go ahead and click on the uh, upgrade to success with luck. Uh, I believe you can do that. Let's have a look. If you click over on your attack roll, it'll expand a little window and say, "Spend that much to success." Yep. I was just making sure it tracked fine. Good. Okay, you use a little bit of your luck point, and what actually happened is that in a quick su succession, you see that your first shot miss, and immediately you don't even you you don't even break stride. You just quickly just pull back on the uh, on on the hammer of the gun, aim a little bit to the right just to correct your shot, still adjusting from the recoil, and you hope to god that this will hit, and you pull the trigger and you do hit him on uh, uh, either on, on his shoulder on or, or on his arm too, 
disarming. So go ahead and roll your damage to see how badly this guy gets. Please don't kill him. Okay. Three points of damage. Yes, that's enough to knock the gun out of his hands. Without killing him. So, yeah, you... The guy grabbed her by the, by the hair and was about to stab her. You shot him and shot the knife out of his hand. Uh, kind of also ruining a little bit of his wrist as well. Uh, his hand kind of is just dangling off of the hand of his lower arm just by a little... Uh, just a, by a little bit of meat and, and gore. It's not a very pleasant sight, but at least you know that you incredibly disabled this guy. Uh, on the bottom floor, the goon that is facing off against you, Ian, is looking around to see what he can do. He's going to reach for the, uh, the knife at the ground and try and stab you. Okay. What do you want to do? Do you want to fight back or try and dodge this stab? Um, if he goes for his knife, can I go for my, uh, my weapon? How would that be working? My uh, gun. Yeah, you can go for your gun and take a shot. What happens, you're fighting back. What happens is that you have to beat his level of success to, to deal damage instead. Uh, I wanted to keep the guy alive. Oh, but, yeah. since I, but, but since I... Gunshots are already happening. I'm as soon as I see him drawing his knife, I'm gonna draw my my own uh, gun. Sure, sure. Uh, you can go ahead, Ian, and roll your <laughs> roll uh, a weapon attack. And because you're in point blank range, you have a a, a bonus die to this. Yeah, it's gonna be a hip shot, pretty much. Mm -hmm. First draw. Oh, dear God, I'm sucking at this again. <laughs> it's alright. So, if this guy succeeds, he's gonna roll a, a D100. If he rolls 50 or higher or lower, he hits you instead. And if he okay. rolls higher than that, it's actually a... <laughs> uh, it's actually gonna be a... Well, let's see. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nope. Uh, what happens is that he goes to hit you uh, with the knife. You quickly just kind of lean back a little bit. You quickly unholster your gun and do a hip shot at him. Uh, what happens is not that you miss. You actually hit. But what you hit is the blade of the knife. Which goes flying out of his hands. Oh, damn, son. I was not expecting that, but... Oh, watch for style. And you see that his gun, uh, his knife just goes slipping way past him, uh, and it's gonna be scattered somewhere in the field, way behind him. And you see that he now has both his hands empty, and he starts to go to decide to reach for his gun instead. As but, soon as, oh, sorry, go on. But that's uh, that's his turn. Now it's your turn. What do you want to do? Um, I'm gonna aim properly, and I'll try to surrender him. I will, as, as soon as he see I, he's trying to go for it, I'll point my gun at him and say, the next one's gonna be at your face. On your knees. Sure, uh, make an intimidate roll with a bonus die. And if he moves, I'll shoot him. Yeah, I don't know if there's a prepared action or something like that, but I would like to... Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, sure. Let me see, intimidation. Yeah, it's just, if your intimidation fails, he will go for you and then you will have to shoot him. Let me let me find intimidation one. Uh, may I use persuasion? Um, you're intimidating him actually, so no, I will not let you do that. Okay then. Uh, how many r bonus dice? One bonus die. Very well then. E yeah, no. He he sees that you're threatening him, but he just kind of sort of. Hisses, snarling at you, showing his very dangled, broken, r rotting teeth. Just says, "Ah, never." And then he goes to try and pull out his gun. He will try and shoot at you. So, what this will be is an opposed roll. 
uh, you go ahead and make your shot. You have a bonus die because you're within point blank range. But he also has a bonus die because of point blank range. If you, uh, mm. if he fails to beat your success, then you will get shot instead. Well, very well done. Ah, for fuck's sake! I'm gonna use my luck. It's only two point. Well, two hold on. L let me see if he actually hits you or if he succeeds. Oh, no, I want to hit it. <laughs> this is getting ridiculous for me. Okay, so let I me will. see. Let me see what level success you have to beat instead. Oh, sorry, I rolled that poorly. Uh, that's a success on his part. Let me roll a d10 for him to see if he uh, would get a higher level of success. Anything above 5 is uh, worthless. No. That's a hard success, which means he beats your success. So, Ian, what you actually need to hit him instead now is a hard success. So you need to spend uh, 15 more luck points to hit him. Or else you will get hit. Okay, then. Luck is meant to be spent, so I'll... <laughs> No, I, I better right. get a shot, I guess. All right, so the two of you go to shoot one another. You know, you notice his movement before time, and you just dodge it to the side with your head as you lose yet another shot at him. Uh, go ahead and roll damage, as his uh, shot just goes wide. Let me see. One, two, ten plus two. Roll damage. Yep. Six damage. Awesome, yeah. Six damage to this goon will... Uh, yeah. He gets a major wound, he collapses on the ground. Uh... From <laughs> your strike. How and do I... Sorry, how do I deduce my ammo for my gun? It does so automatically for you. Oh no, sorry, you didn't do that. So right-click the little uh, wheel, spinny wheel thing. Thank you, kindly. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, you hit him, he falls prone on the ground, uh, very painfully hurt. Let me make a constitution check for this guy to see if he, he's, he stays conscious or not. He does, <laughs> he is still conscious and still gripping his gun, even though he's shaking and bleeding profusely. Can I take the... oh, no, not my turn anymore, sorry. Uh, actually, it is your turn still. Well, I... You still have your movement, technically, so what do you want to do? Oh, I'm gonna move over his hand and step on the gun. Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, go ahead and make a brawl check. With a bonus die. He'll try and resist without any dice. And I will... And can, I, can I just finish him off, actually? No. Um, Never mind, I'm gonna surrender him. I need information. Sure. 18. Alright, that's a success. Very good. He also succeeds, but because you were starting the movement, he is not able to resist. You just go over, kick the gun out of his hand, he can't even resist, and he's just there, prone on the ground. He seems... Oh, he... He has no way of reacting, you're just trained with your gun, aiming right at him, he's done for. So, we go back upstairs now to... Uh, yeah, November, you're, you go first, the guy has been disarmed uh, from his knife, he let go of Clara because, you know, you all sh almost shot off his hand, uh, and he's... He is not looking good. He doesn't have any ways to react to you. You imagine that you sh almost shot off his good hand. Uh, hmm. Are you doing anything? Um, I'm going to move into the room, let Clara pass me. Um, but as she passes by, I'll mention that... Um, wow, my brain is completely blanked on her name. Vivian um, ran to get help from the police um, or the sheriff. So probably make sure she's gotten there safe. Alright. Uh, where's Phineas, though? 
Uh, as you look around, as you're moving closer to the guy, you notice that the body that is falled on the ground uh, is bleeding and is oh. Phineas. Um, apologies, but I can't remember which one of you was the doctor. Vaughn. Vaughn is. Vaughn, okay. Um, I don't really have anything I need to do this turn other than keep the injured guy the injured bandit under watch but Vaughn I think maybe try patching up our friend here alright so uh, November and Silas I assume that the two of you will just kind of first aid see if I can do anything to save him I mean he's my friend sure uh, there's no need as soon as you go over you notice that he's bleeding way too much there's you imagine that whatever happened to him happened a while ago before you guys even arrived he is dead damn it he's dead there's nothing that we can do these bandits have killed him so uh with that out of the way i think we're out of combat you all subdue the, the bandits. Or what's left of them. Yeah, what's <laughs> left of them. So Vivian has just uh, is running off into town. Loud gunshot going off behind her. Uh, there's a guy fa fell on the ground in front of you, Ian. Completely disarmed and with nothing to fight back. And this other goon on the top floor has... Mm, barely has his hand left. And is also just kind of collapsed uh, against the wall in the corner. It just looks up at the three of you that are that have approached him now. So, what are you guys doing? What the heck is this all about? Why why in the world would you attack these people? The the goon that is looking up at you, he says, <laughs> "You owe us money. You came to collect. The fuck are you? We're his friends." And nobody does that to one of my friends. Oh, I just gone and did it, big guy. What you gonna do about it? I'll watch you dance at the end of a rope in town later on. He looks up to the three of you and he just scowls. But he can't do anything to react. Let's uh, search him over. See what else he's got on him. I don't want any hidden weapons or anything popping out. Sure. Uh, it doesn't take so long. You guys completely take from him everything that he owns. You take away his 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 gun, uh, a pocket watch, a whiskey flask that he had on him, and that's about it. Nothing nothing really of importance or worth. Well, hopefully the knife that he stabbed whoever with. Oh yeah, the knife that you uh, shot off his, off his, off of his hands. Also, you pick it up. Yeah, yeah. Do you want me to see if I can save his hand? It doesn't nah. matter to me. I'm voting for no, personally. Well, I guess as long as he's not actively dying on us. So who did he actually... I mean, who do you actually work for? Who who did... Who claims that Phineas owed the money? <laughs> you never heard of the Crusoe, huh? You cross us, we cross you. Say it one more time. The Crusoe? The, Cru the Crusoe gang. Uh, Crusoe, okay. Perfect. There you go. Got it. I, I I've never heard of these people. Have any of you? Uh, I may have. Is there a role I can do to see if I've heard of them? Uh, well, you better hack and believe there is. You can. Any of you can make a. This this is a variety of roles you can you can take your pick. It's gonna be either history, library use, or law. Well, I'm not up there, so... <laughs> I'm not good at any of those. <laughs> that was my best. <laughs> uh, fine, let's see if luck's on my side, and I'll try library. Actually, Silas, you can instead use your gambling skill, because this is some way relevant to that. Ah! Oh. Hey, I got it with Lacha. Nice. Whoa! <laughs> oh what? my god. I mean, let's face it, the lizards... No, instead of in the, in the combat, so... I said I didn't know these people. 
<laughs> well, I'm glad that I didn't let you let let you lie. <laughs> I'm 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 glad that was on a gambling check that didn't necessarily matter, and not when it's important. So, Vaughn, you're the only one who knows this. Law enforcement over in Colorado has been looking up, has been sort of on attention because it would seem that there's this gang of people, the Crusoe gang, coming down from Wyoming, the state over north. Apparently led by Victor Crusoe himself. It's a gang of ne'er-do-wells that are seemingly running away from law enforcement and also taking hits as they can. Whenever they are in town, they seem to see what uh, uh, what odd jobs they can do to people. Apparently here they have taken to, uh, to money lending and also uh, racketeering. I'm sorry, racketeering? Yep. What would that be? I'm so, I never heard of the word. It's where you rub, run people out for money, so like insurance gambits and stuff, or or money laundering, or uh, where you uh, you know pay pay me a hundred dollars, or you might have your place burned yeah. down. Um, yeah, pretty much. Most about common more. example would be things like protection rackets, where you basically pay someone for either protecting you or just actively not murdering you. Yeah. Uh. Blackmail in general, thank you. Sort of, yeah. And you know that uh, the Crusoe gang has been coming down from the north, from Wyoming, and ever since word got around that they crossed the border, a lot of people have been on the lookout for them. And it would seem that Phineas has been the, their, well, one of their latest uh, targets. I will also say on top of that that you have seen uh, a description of Victor Crusoe, and none of these guys that you have seen seem to uh, match the description. So that's all that you learn with your l successful law role. Yeah, I'm going to tell the others what I know hmm. about it, and then I'm the only one who knows any medicine, so I'm going to go on uh, Jan and... Uh, Clara, make sure neither of them got hurt. Uh, sure, you go over down to Ian where he is and you see that he has on his own managed to subdue this one guy. Yeah, I was about to interrupt and just shout out. And your guy's still alive? But you already passed on to me, so it's okay. And you see that Clara has... Only now you really take a moment to look at her and you see that she's uh, on the grounds now, out of the house, a little bit farther away from Ian, she's looking back at the house, uh, and you see that she's, uh, her whole hair is disheveled, her eyes are puffy from crying and all reddened, and she's just uh, really desperate. She has managed to calm down a little bit after you, you all take the situation into control, but she's still, you imagine that she's under a lot of stress after what just happened. Well, yeah, understandably. She hears what you say, and she just starts nodding, looking around for Vivian. You remind her that Vivian uh, went running into town, and, uh, and she just nods. Uh, she understands what you said, but she is not saying anything. So, <clears throat> is there anything else you guys want to get out of these guys before I move on? Uh... Um, did he say what he took money out for? Because we know that... Uh... You know, our friend owed him money, but did he mention what it was for? Uh, no, he didn't. Okay, fair. Uh, well, uh, do I see the guys? I know that they're alive. Yeah, uh, all of you uh, at this point, you just kind of, uh, drag the guys both to one place, probably in front of the house. Uh, keep your weapons at hand, trained on them. Actually, if you, if you, I'm sorry for interrupting you, but if you don't mind... I would like them to get, uh, look at the guy I, I surrendered and go run back town to find Vivian because I'm not sure she was even aware of what she should be doing. She might be just running in panic. Someone has to look for her. Uh, I will get you that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you all try to really uh, wrangle up these guys however best you can, but they... They just seem like criminals. They don't seem to have a lot else going on. Uh, after some time, you hear the 
off into the distance, you hear the galloping, uh, and you see coming back is uh, the sheriff and the deputy. You uh, recognize them. Uh, Albert Davidson and Harrison Navarro, the sheriff and deputy, respectfully. And they, uh, they come in, ready to, you know, take on, on to whatever's going on. They look at the four of you, they recognize you, and they see the, the man fell, uh, well, the man fell on the ground, and the two others that have been surrendered, they immediately get what's going on. Uh, the sheriff gets down and approaches all, all four of you and says, What in the Sam hell is going on around here? Who are these? What happened? They're part of Okay, the, first of all, where's Zivian? A little girl. She might be... He's the one who called you guys. Yeah, we left her in town. She's, she's being attended to. She was a mess. You guys take care of this. I'm going to find her. Poor thing. She's in here. shock. She needs, she needs her mother. I'll go I'm going to say, see if you can take Clara with you. The sheriff looks over at the deputy and says, uh, Go on with them. Take uh, the three of you can go. And he points to you, Ian, to Clara, and to the deputy. And the three of you just go off into town to look uh, for uh, for Vivian. Uh, only, I, uh, only I need to go. If you guys need to speak to the sheriff. I'll just hold Clara close gently as much as I can. And I'll just keep speaking softly to her and saying things like, don't worry, we've been, we've been safe and sound. We're going to take you to her. We're here. We're going to take care of you. Just try to give whatever you know, calm of peace of mind she can have. Sure. Uh, so as you go off, the sheriff turns back to the three of you once again. So, who are these? What happened? They say they're members of the Crusoe gang and that Phineas owed them money. I, I can't see why or how he would be owing them money, but they came and they roughed up everybody and they nearly clear killed Clara. Uh, if we hadn't gotten here whenever we did, they probably would have been three dead bodies here rather than one. And Mr. Roscoe is where he is. Yeah, he's up. He's upstairs, dead. They they stabbed him. He was he was done cold by the time that you that we got here. You see that the sheriff just takes off his hat, kind of puts it across his chest, and just looks down, shakes his head. It's the oh, this goddamn criminals once again. He just shakes his head, trying to look for words. We can't have good things. If we do, this kinds of people come up and starts to wreck everything up. Well, I don't know you, but I do know the word that has been going on around the Crusoe family, uh, the Crusoe gang. And he's saying this, looking to the to the true guys on the ground as he approaches them. But whoever it is that you are, I have no reason to trust you over this this man here. If they say that you're a Crusoe gang, and if you have indeed killed old, old Mr. Roscoe, it's up to the news with the two of you. All right. God damn. All right, let's go. And then he just uh, tosses a rope to one of you guys. Gets another one that he had. Starts uh, hog tying those two men to take them prisoners and bring them back to uh, to town. I'll help him. Sure. So, all of you help them bring down, bring back the criminals into town. And as soon as all of you come to town, uh, it's the talk of the town. Everyone's on the street uh, just kind of looking over. They see that uh, 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 Vivian had run into town a while ago, crying and calling for help, and everyone's now just kind of huddled in a corner uh, near the saloon. Uh, Ian is there along with along with uh, Clara. All three of them are there uh, along with the rest of the people of the saloon. A lot of characters that you know very well, uh, the townspeople. 
uh, they all see you returning with uh, with the sheriff Albert and the, the those two goons. And as soon as they see the, the goons, everyone starts just kind of uh, booing at them and spitting at them. And the sheriff just kind of starts shooing people off like, Come on, come on, let me pass, let me pass. But not doing anything to stop the, the people from, you know, showing their disdain for for this uh, for these villains. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, since, since I don't exactly make uh, much of an effort of helping out the law when I can, what I will do, however, is try to gather up some folks from town who can, you know, help clean up the residence and get some repairs done. Sure. Uh, over the next few weeks, what happens is that all of you help the... Well, not necessarily the, the next few weeks. That's a lot of time. Uh, all of you do help the... Uh, the, the, the widow and the daughter with whatever they need. You kind of try and stay close. You being like familiar people that that have been there in their hour, uh, hour of, of need, and you see that they seem a little bit mistrustful of uh, anyone else in town uh, right at this moment. But you guess that they are both like in some sort of shock. Uh, you help the sheriff re-explaining everything that happened. Uh, you go around talking to contacts, trying to find whatever information you have on the Crusoe gang, and it would seem that indeed this. Uh, uh, Mr. Phineas Roscoe has been there, indeed, their latest victim. Uh, you have heard word that they're that hey, they have recently been seen causing up some other rackets uh, up north. Uh, you go over to the house to help clean it up, however you can. Uh, I don't need to <laughs> to say that your hunting trip has been ruined. And uh, just a few days later, all of you meet back again in town for the funeral of uh, Phineas Roscoe. It's kind of somber. Everyone's just kind of sweating quite a lot under the hot sun and all of you in your best uh, clothes. And eventually Vivian just kind of... Well, Clara actually. They both go to you because Vivian kind of wants to go over to you guys, and Clara sees no reason to say no. Uh, they approach now a little bit more, uh, uh, a little bit more sincere and kind of appreciative of you guys, and says, "I, I, I don't know what to say. This was just, I think, thank you for for." For saving us. Uh, well, I simply go down on one knee and just offer her a hug. You don't say much. Vivian, she just kind of hugs you very tightly, and you, and you hear that as soon as she does and buries her head in your neck, she just starts quietly sobbing. Clara, the the widow, she she just looks at the all of you and says. I, my husband, he was a very good friend with the four of you. I, I need to apologize for everything. And thank you for coming to our rescue. I don't know what would have been of us if it, would, if it were not for you. Nah, don't mention it. I, I say that while I just let even cry a little bit. I just pat her head a little bit and just say, you were doing just your job as a mother. Make it a word better for your daughter. Don't you worry. We are just sorry for not getting there earlier. I... I don't know what to say. Uh, I... Sorry. I... I have friends coming over to help me pack some of my belongings, my... My family lives over in Kansas. I'm gonna 
I just wanted to say goodbye to you all. I see no reason to stay behind. Uh, we understand. If you need any help during the moving, you know, you can always call us, okay? I know. I No, I have not been the friendliest person with all four of you, but you are. I will never forget you and what you have done. Thank you for being there in our hour of need. Claire, Corn. do you do you have any idea how Phineas got hooked up with these people? I I don't know. I never really meddled much into his affairs. Much in the same way that I never really meddled in your guys' affairs whenever the five of you would gather up. Because I know how Phineas likes to keep his well liked to keep his things his business separated from our life. I am I'm, I'm 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 really sorry, but I don't know. I guess he must have loaned some some money to them or borrowed some money or hmm. or maybe from what I hear the sheriff telling, uh they might have threatened me and my daughter and he was just trying to keep us safe from them. I, I don't really know. I guess we'll never know from them because they're certainly not going to tell us anything. Well, I still... Um, no, just a side note. Uh, since I was responsible for knowing what he was doing and writing about it, would I know something about uh, some money he spent recently or something like that? Just wondering if something rings a bell. Mm. You know, uh, let me think for a while. You probably would think back to all the things that you have been uh, writing for him or with him and the way that you have been trying to clear up his name. You can go ahead and make a library use or accounting check to try and remember uh, any information about it. Yeah, since it's, uh, I would say it's fairly recent since the, the gang just showed up not too long ago. Makes my life a little easier. Uh, how much do I need to make a decent? So, uh, just wondering. I'm sorry. Off game. Uh, okay. When do we, when we do we recharge the luck points? You don't recharge. You gain one d10 hit points at the end of every session. Okay, then. So never mind. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh. Hence why I don't want you guys to be way too liberal with your luck points. Because you you will not get all of them back. You will get a bit of them back. So, um, as all of you talk to to her, and you think back to it, uh, Ian, you try to remember, but usually Phineas only really tells you about the things that he's been doing and updates you on what you need to write about on those hunting trips that you guys do every month. And you imagine that he would have told you then if he had had the opportunity, which unfortunately didn't happen. Very well then. Is it possible he may have kept a journal or something? The, I, well, the sheriff is going over his things and if he finds something, he'll let me know. And then I, I guess if it really matters to you guys, I'll, I'll try and let you all know. Um, I, I, I'll try and write. I'll address it to to the town, to the post office, and and well. Yeah, we can come by and pick it up. If right. you, I don't know if you want to keep in touch, and I don't know if I want to stay in touch with you all, but at least on this matter. I'll let you all know, and I'll... Just, I'll write you. Just consider it to an, an emergency lifeline if you need it. Yeah, don't you worry. You, you're going to have enough. You have time to think what you want. We'll be here if, you, if and when you make your choice, so don't you worry. Of course. Well, if you'll uh, excuse me, I... Goodbye. Goodbye. And then she turns around, calls out for her daughter, Vivian, 
or yeah, uh, and the two of them walk out. You see that some friends, some uh, ladies, they approach, and they start to walk off with her, with the two of them, and they just go off into town, and you guys are left to wonder about what happened as the funeral comes to a close. Phineas is buried in the in the cemetery, in uh, right behind the church. This big blue building right here that I'm pinging right now. Don't know if you guys can see on the map. Hold on, let me close it. Yes, I can see a yep. small ping. So that big blue building is the church. Behind it is the graveyard. Oh no, I only see a uh, a cross, red cross called Game Master. Yeah. All yeah. yeah. Can... Oh, you can't yeah. see you. You can't see the map or anything. No, there's no map. Just a wooden. Please. Hold. <laughs> huh. Can anyone else see the map? I can see yes. it. I see the map. I can as well. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it might be something on your end. Uh, you can uh, refresh the page to load it up, or you can go ahead and check the stream to see the map on the stream. Okay, give me a minute. I'll mute myself, just the sound on leak. Keep going. All right, so um, the on, on that right behind that big blue building uh, is well, that big blue building is the church, and right behind it is the is is, is the cemetery, the graveyard where uh, Phineas has been buried, and all of you have gone there, done your best to honor your friend, and then each of you went your own way. You reconvened, however. A week later, back into Devilbrook, uh, at this point, Clara and Vivian had already moved away, and you reconvene back in the saloon to talk to one another, try and just lament the loss of a friend, and talk to one another about what will become of you, your group of friends, seeing as... Uh, well, as the reason all of you got together on those monthly hunting trips was precisely because uh, Phineas invited all of you and had little tasks and things for you guys to do. And now that he's gone, you wonder what will become of your little group of friends, your posse, if you will. Is there anything you guys want to say to one another or, di or discuss? Uh, well, I mean... We lost a friend, it would be quite a shame that we dismantle because of that. Uh, we he enjoyed the hunting sessions, and I don't see why we would not be able to continue with them, at least for a little bit, as a friendship memento of his memory. Hmm. For, for what it's worth, I, I can understand if none of you particularly want to hang around with me. But, you know, I, I don't exactly want something like this to happen to any of you. So, if you find yourself in trouble like this, call me. Or send me a message, either way. Of course. We'll keep each other in touch. We have things to do, but like I said... We can meet each other here on the next hunting, you know? Yeah, I'd like that. Same for you, oh. If you need some bookworm, just let, or just a, some some guy, some big guy to help with the moving, just let me know. The good old well, stuff. I'm, I'm sure I'll see you guys a lot. You, you lot are a troublemaking group, and I'm the only one in town who will patch you up, so... Oh, come on now. I haven't been shot in at least two months. Yeah, we're gonna keep I don't our... like the fact that you're counting. Oh, we're gonna keep our friend doctor in business, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of farming accidents to help with that, but not the most profitable work. 
<laughs> like, just to be glad I haven't recommended you to any of my other friends. Otherwise, you would be uh, very, very busy. <laughs> Oh, do you, th you think we should do something about this Caruso gang? Mm. I I don't know. It's still far too recent to think about that. Don't th don't get me wrong. I would really love to shove my my hand up their ass and blast them new one. Just you know, not a Philip, but. This ain't like the books where we just go around rogue and be heroes. Oh, I, I know that, but they messed up a good job for me. You know, well, I, I used this money and I definitely needed it. <laughs> well, we'll see you next time. We have stuff to do. Hmm. They haven't been on anyone's books lately, as far as I can tell, at least down here. I'm sorry, what? I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Well, they haven't caused us any trouble lately. Well, we can just keep an eye out for them, at least. Not the not wisest thing to do, let me tell you. But who knows? We might make some good after all. God knows that we were not the clear example of good citizens. Clara was sharp as an, as an eye for that. So, uh, just keep our guns loaded, just in case. <laughs> Always. So, as you guys are talking out uh, amongst yourselves, trying to decide what will become of your group, of your posse, as time goes on, and now that Phineas is no longer among you guys, uh, you start to hear loud noises going on outside, some commotion, some, uh, a lot of screaming, a lot of people yelling, and then, before too long, start to hear gunshots going on wildly, all over the place. That doesn't sound good. No, uh, we should, uh, take cover. Oh, for God's sake, that's all! So, as you hear, start to hear just all manner of hell breaking loose outside. What do you guys do? Take cover and look out the window. Our guns, again. Guns out, too. Sure. You never know what's coming. Mm -hmm. All of you guys uh, pick out your guns. Uh, ev uh, the other few patrons in the saloon, some of them also pick out guns and also go to the other windows to look out. Uh, you see that people who don't have guns on themselves, they just kind of go to hide whatever they can behind the bar or up upstairs to the to the little bedrooms. Uh, everyone is trying to hide in whatever way they can. And as you look out the windows, you do see that um, a big group of people on horsebacks have just ridden into town. Uh, you see that there's a lot of them. Uh, let us count here. I'm gonna hazard a guess that's the Crusoe gang. Uh, what? I mean, that's it. We didn't even have to look for them. <laughs> <laughs> About like 10 riders on horseback, they just come into town yelling, uh, shouting, and then just opening fire at whoever is on the streets. You see that the sheriff and the deputy, they, they quickly stop whatever they are doing and they start to pull out their guns to go uh, towards the, the, these people. Some uh, some other of the townsfolk also who have um, whatever means to defend themse themselves and some stake in town, they uh, they also pull out their guns to go in, into the fray. Uh, however, you know that most of them are not that good accomplished shooters anyways and uh, this you see that in front of the uh, of this group riding on his horse there's a man kind of very rugged with a with a very thick musta uh, mustache uh, going on he 
has a has a revolver on his hands and starts shooting at people that are just trying to flee and then he turns around kind of pulling the reins on his horse and starts yelling y'all bastards in this godless town I heard you captured my gang poor little Thomas where is he are you keeping him in some prisoner gonna hang a noose around his neck hell no you ain't I'm here to cause havoc in this town and kill everyone that stands in my way and you see that uh, the sheriff uh, also takes cover along with the deputy and some people in the ta uh, in the saloon alongside you guys start whispering to one another <gasps> that's the Crusoe gang it's Victor Victor Crusoe and as soon as they call out for Victor, Victor Crusoe uh, those people in that were ready to defend the saloon they just lower their weapons and also go into hiding you see that they don't want anything to do with these people uh, I just I uh, take the chance while, while I see their mood altering I just go then and just say don't you be such, such chickens do you think they'll take ease on you just because you guys don't fight back don't you guys have wives and children to protect go on hide them go to the croup Wait for them to get your your balls and rip them off. I'll have, fight for my place. Have I never heard of Victor Crusoe? He's he's a man, just no, like me and you. No, a he's good not. Ahead, gonna save it. People say that he made a pact with the devil. He cannot die. I don't. I'm. I don't know what he is, but I'm not gonna stand here and take my chances. It's your uh. funeral if you stay. And they just run off. Well, too bad that I have to make holy bullets on the other pants. So, uh, are you guys doing anything specific? Uh, sorry, just wondering. Are we still gonna play, or I'm not sure when it's gonna end the game session. Just wondering. We're going out for another hour. Okay then. Well, I'm f I'm fighting. I'm down for it. I'm down for fighting. Yeah, Vaughn's not going anywhere. I oh. can't exactly have them running around killing civilians, so... Okay, so, let me describe what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, you see that this gang, they just starting shooting down people however they can, sort of using the horses to give themselves more maneuverability, and you see that everyone has a very hard time hitting them uh, as they're going by, and you see that a lot of people seem to be trying to shoot down Victor, but somehow he manages to avoid most of those shots and whatever shots actually hit him you see that uh it doesn't seem to impact him nearly as much and you notice that he's wearing a very thick leather uh, vest uh, uh, jacket and then you notice that hmm. most of them seem to be wearing very thick leathers not that it makes them bulletproof but it helps uh, a little bit I uh, I just I, when I lost that I Turn to my friends, I just say, spread out, aim for the hats. They have thick leather stuff. I'll try to barrack yeah. the, the door, whatever I can. And I, I take whatever I can find, like chairs or something, place on the doors. If there, if there's, it's not the saloon kind of doors, it just flap open. They are. Ah, yeah. Well, then let's go to the upper floors. Some uh, I'll yeah. hold it. I'll hold the the stairs in case they try to enter. All right. So you see that they are the the gang, the Crusoe gang. They kind of break off into little uh, couples or trios. Uh, you see that a, a group, uh, one of those trios, is going for the sheriff and the deputy, and it would look like they're gonna overwhelm them. Uh, you do see that. Uh, talking to one another uh, well, they were talking to one another, they're not anymore but uh, kind of huddled together is the priest and the mortician uh, slightly closer to the to the church and you see that another group goes towards them as well and you do see that there's a uh, there's a few uh, <coughs> there's a group of three women also that are just kind of caught outside in the, in the street 
Uh, you know them to be sisters. They are all uh, there in a little group, and you see that uh, the gang breaks off into trios, duels to go after those specific people and another. Uh, they don't seem very very concerned with trying to break into, into the saloon just yet. What are you guys going to do? If we can, let's see if we can give some cover for the sheriff. That's what I'd like to do. Likewise. Alright, uh, you can't quite do much from inside the saloon. You will have to go out to the back and onto to other buildings or like get closer if you want to give any yeah. sort of cover sh sh uh, sh cover fire. Yeah, see if I can stealth out through there. Okay. Uh, uh, can't we shoot from the upper floor or something? Uh, Isn't from, that windows? From the upper floor... Uh, there's... There are some windows and you can try and shoot out of them uh, to a certain degree, but you see that they are going off into different directions and at some point you're not going to be able to see any, any one of them anymore. The windows are great for protecting the saloon, but as soon as those people go away from the saloon, your visibility gets very bad. Okay, hmm. um, and there's there's something on the saloon that I can use, like people who drop their guns, or... I, I know it's not the 2000, but something I can make like a Molotov cocktail. I have 40 on arts and craft. I might be able to sure. see something that I find usable. Sure, there's a... You're in the saloon. There's a there's plenty of uh, uh, whiskey bottles and other other spirits in the bar that you are sure are very, very strong in alcohol. Well, I grab two of them, if possible, and I make shift some Molotov cocktails. And I'm and my plan is to throw them from the upper window, where I can have a better leverage and harder to see and shoot me. Okay, so Ian, you're going off to craft some Molotovs, run up to the upper window and lob Molotovs onto people uh, to try and delay them in some way, shape, or form. Well, at uh, least I'm gonna, I'm gonna make them drop their thick, clo thick clothes, making them easy to shoot down. Okay, uh, S Silas, you're going uh, going out of the saloon to try and give some cover fire. To which of those group of people I had described? Uh, to the sheriff. The sheriff and the deputy. Yep. Okay. I'm just we gonna throw at the closest one. It's easier. Okay. Uh, the closest one would be the sisters. That's the, group, well that's the group that they're going after that you can uh, still sort of catch from, uh, from the window. Uh, Vaughn and November, are you going after any group to try and defend them? Are you doing anything different? What are you um, doing? I'm gonna see if I can like hunker down by one of the front windows of the saloon and shoot outwards, basically just to help provide some cover for the sheriff. Okay, so you're also still trying to cover for the sheriffs. Uh, if yep. that's so, you will have to move out of the saloon and move a little bit closer. Ah, okay then. Then yeah, I, I don't mind doing that. Sure, you do that then. Vaughn, what are you doing? Uh, Vaughn's gonna go with Silas with his Molotov cocktails, but I'm gonna stick to the gun and just provide cover fire for him. Okay. So... Ian, I need you to go ahead and make a arts and crafts check to craft some Molotov cocktail. Just, oh, with just... Ian with the Molotovs? Yeah. Oh, I will go with him then. Uh, to see if you're... How many you're able to make, and if you don't accidentally... Well, if you can make any. Really. I'll, I'll be seriously disappointed if I cannot just show a piece of cloth on an alcohol bottle. I'll well, be sad. It's more, uh, by the way, you have a bonus die because Vaughn is helping you with that. And it's more so that you know, you're not doing this just kind of doing no, that. No, no. You're, I'm not saying about the... you're, you're stressed. You're in distress, and you need to make this very fast. You're... You're doing this as you're running up the stairs, so go ahead and give me a arts and craft check. You have a bonus die. No, no, I'm not complaining about the fact that I need to roll. I'm, I'm saying that if I fail this, I'm gonna be seriously disappointed with myself. That's well, what I meant. Well, let's see how it goes then. 
Ooh. Oh, that's good. Good. You managed to craft uh, some tree uh, Molotov cocktails. You grab onto Chu and you hand one off to Vaughn. Uh, mostly that's so he can hang on to them if he doesn't want to lob them around. <laughs> and you run up to the uh, top floor, you see that those gang, the gang has started spreading into those little clusters to go after those target uh, people. Uh, Silas and November, the two of you rush out the back. Uh, go ahead and give me a stealth check. One of you, probably Silas, has the highest stealth. How about yep. a uh, regular <laughs> difficulty? You manage... Uh, that's a hard success. You manage to uh, help hunker down along with November and uh, get very close to the sheriff and the deputy without being seen. You even find yourself a good position to hunker down in. At this point, you're kind of sort of far away from the uh, from the from the saloon. Hmm. Uh, but still, the two of you guys get close. So now, I want you, Ian, to make a a roll. <laughs> Should toss your your your, your Molotov cocktails. <laughs> okay, which should I roll? Yeah, I'm looking to that. Uh, that would be a troll skill check. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Oh no. Ah shit. Yeah. Uh, well, at least I didn't burn off the, the entire saloon, so yeah, that's that. At least it's not a fumble. A fumble is something horrible happens. So. <clears throat> Uh, you quickly try to toss one of the cock uh, one of the uh, one of the cocktails out of the window, and uh, they're a little bit too far, a little bit farther away than you thought they they were, and it just kind of breaks on the street, fails to hit them, and they immediately notice the the two of you over there by the windows and this group. They seem to lose attention in the systems in the sisters, and they start to try and shoot back at you guys. Uh, uh, Vaughn, you can make a a shooting check, and Ian, you can also go ahead and make a shooting check or another throw check to try and toss another uh, Molotov at them. I'll just throw another one of them, mm -hmm. rather than just explode inside and make things worse. Sure. I just hope and I got a better end this time. That's just a weapon attack you want me to make? Yes, with your gun or whatever you're using. Ah, no, I'm gonna use my, my luck. To make this a decent roll. It's just seven. Sure. Alright, Vaughn, unfortunately you fail. <laughs> by a lot. Uh, you try to give a hailing cover fire for, uh, onto those people as... As Ian is just lobbing cocktail after cocktail. He has two of them and he lobs both of them. Trying to catch someone. And you do, surprisingly enough. Uh, despite the distance and the fact that they're rushing up and down the street on horseback. So, uh, Ian, you can go ahead and roll 2d6, that's, that's the damage for the Molotov cocktail. 2d6? Yes, 2d6. I uh, love that. Vaughn, you fail to really hit any one of them, but you mostly just kind of shoot at them and prevent them from doing anything true or uh, harmful. Back. Uh, well, a little, a little lower, but then... Sure, uh... There's this one guy, you see that he has a, a very commanding look to him, you don't know who he is, but you hit him right square in the face with the uh, with the Molotov cocktail. Uh, it burns, create a, creates a little gout of flame onto him and also onto his horse. The horse just kind of reins up and kicks him out, off and j just dashes as it's also set alight, a flame rather, and just rushes down the street. On fire, and the guy falls on the ground, and uh, he and the other two that are with him, they they look up the windows and they say, "Hold on, those people there, I think it's them. Go after them to the saloon." The other guy, the commanding guy, he's mostly just yelling and uh, kind of tapping himself to uh, make the <laughs> to stop burning, pretty much. Silas and November, the two of you go ahead and make a gun check to give some covering fire for the sheriff and the deputy. Alright. Unless you're doing something else. As you are very close to them. Jesus. Alright. Uh, 
Okay, Silas and November, the two of you succeed, you can go ahead and roll damage. I've already rolled for mine. Eight damage. Seven. Cool, great. Let me roll a couple constitution checks. Mm-hmm. Because those are... Okay, one, one person makes it. That one does not. Okay, cool. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Ooh, November, you hit one of those guys. Uh, you see that he's not riding with a with a with a gun. He's riding with a rifle, off of the horseback. And as soon as you sh you shoot him, uh, you do so in such a very precise location that he falls off of his horse down to the ground, kind of with a grunt, uh, all completely befuddled. And just as you're taking cover to reload, he quickly gets up and rushes into an alley, kind of still limping a little bit. Uh, it seems like you managed to get him real good. Nice. He is not dead, but you got him, so That's that helps. Not a problem yet. Uh, you see that as, as the whole sh uh, shooting is going on, they've both hit the sheriff and the deputy. Uh, they're not overwhelmed because you guys are there to protect them, so they're not out, uh, outright killed. Mm. The they're they're good for now. Uh, one of the guys is shot. Uh, you see that the other guy that you shot, Silas, he right. he also falls off the back of his horse, and he just is unconscious in the middle of the, of, of the street. And let me also roll a luck check for him. Actually, no, never mind. You roll a luck check, Silas. That's a success. You shoot him and knock him in just a way that uh, the horse that has been set aflame just tramples over him and he dies. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Nice. What a way to go. So, goodbye, Edwin Giles. You're no longer my character list. We hardly knew you. <laughs> and you give some covering fire to the sheriff and then the... the guy, the big guy... Victor Crusoe, who's part of the group that were with these other two, he looks at you, the, the the two of you down there, and he... There seems to be a weird air of recognition in his eyes as he looks at you, and he just dashes around the corner of a, of a street to get out of, you know, shooting range, getting some cover, but you'd know that he would be back for you, for you too. We gotta get out of here. Uh, Sheriff, are you okay? Fuck me. Yes. No. Uh, I can't. I can barely feel my arm. I can't hold my gun. Uh, I, I, Damn. I, I can't fight. The deputy, where is he? Uh, he was shot too, I think. And you all just look at the deputy and you see that he also. Uh, he's bleeding a little bit, he's uh, knocked unconscious, but he 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 seems alive, he's still breathing. And the sheriff looks at him and says, I'll, I'll bring him inside, you... Hide, do something. Alright. He kind of goes and grabs the, the deputy and starts dragging him inside as the two of you uh, cover them. Yep. Yep. We, we gotta get out of here soon, November. Yeah, I agree, but let at least get these people seen too, and maybe see if we can draw their fire outside of town. Yeah. Uh, just as you say that, and you look, you see, you notice that the the shouting down the street, something about the saloon, and then you see that all of the other riders they reconvene and start going after the saloon. Oh man, I'm in trouble. <sighs> Well, as long as they don't block off the back, we should be all right. Still, we we gotta get these guys to safety and then see if we can make our own way out. Yeah. So what do you guys? And yes, do? and yes, sheriff. Next time you arrest me, I will remind you of this moment. The sheriff says, looks at you and says, "Fine, just do something now." <laughs> Fair enough. All right. All right. Let's see if we can sneak back in the back. Uh, are you trying to sneak in back? Or... Yeah, to get back in the back so that maybe as they rush in, we can like just like open fire into them if they come in through the saloon. 
Okay, so I will need the two of you to go ahead and make a stealth roll this time around. You have been seen out in the, into the streets. Ooh. Alright. So... Silas, you manage to duck into a corner and start to go in. Uh, but then, just as you're rushing, uh, some of them notice you that are going down the street and then they start shooting towards you guys. November, you take a tumble and fall down to the ground. Uh... You are not hit by any bullets, thankfully, but you tumble down to the ground, you're prone, and then as you start to stand up to keep on running, you see a shadow blocking the sun above you. And then ah, when, you, when you look back to see, uh, you are face to face with no other than Victor Crusoe, who just points his revolver right at your face and says, You're one of them. Get fucked. And he shoots you in the head. Oh no! November. There is no surviving being shot in the head. You die. Oh. Okay. Well, nice knowing you, everybody. Silas, what are you doing as you see November being shot dead in the middle of the street? Run. Where to? Uh, somewhere around the side of the jail? Uh, I'm trying to make my way back to the saloon, but, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to try to avoid these guys. Okay, uh, you just see November lying dead on the ground, the pool of blood forming underneath him, and you just start weaving your way through the, through the streets and the houses, the alleyways, just trying to get back to the saloon. Meanwhile... <clears throat> The saloon is quickly getting, uh, uh, the front of it is being shut down. You see uh, people shooting their revolvers, rifles, shotguns, both of the front of the saloon and at the upper floor where you guys are taking cover from Vaughn and Ian. Uh, what are you doing? You're out of Maltov's, people are shooting you, they seem to have a thing for you guys. What are you doing? Well, a lot of, a lot of drinks, right? Come again? All out of drinks, no cocktails, right? Yeah, you're out of them. How many of them are shooting at us from uh, outside? Uh, initially it was two, one guy has been set aflame. So it was two, but now the other riders are reconvening on your position. You see that they have left the the priest and the mortician alone and they are focusing on you guys for some reason. And um, yeah, now the entirety of the gang is coming down on you. Uh, is there a back door or something? There is one, you saw, you know there is a back door, the one that Silas and November used to go through. I... I call Vaughn and I just say, back door. They're, they're not surrounding us yet, but they will. Aren't we on the second floor though? Yes, we are. Yeah, you have to go down and then through the back door. That, just and for the... the note, do we have time for that or just they are already closing in too far? Uh, okay. they, they are very... They are closing in uh, uh, on you guys. You have very little time to do crazy maneuvers. Like blocking okay, so anything. Door, then. Well, I'm out of ideas for now. I'll just shoot the shit out of them. It's better than getting cornered in here. Okay, so the two of you are running down the, the stairs and out through the back. You see that these guys are... Uh, they. Uh, it doesn't take long before they... They notice that there's very little people, there are very little resistance, very few people shooting back. So they go over closer, they start to break down the windows and starting aiming in and taking shots at you guys. They are incredibly close. And this place has a lot of windows, you didn't block all windows. They can't quite come inside because the door is a little bit blocked with knocked over tables. But the windows, man, there's a lot and you didn't have time to block all of them. So that's what they're using to come in through. I need the two of you, Vaughn and Ian, to make a dodge roll. As you're trying to weave past all this bullet fire <laughs> and uh yeah, get out. May Matrix bless us all. Well, it was nice meeting you. <clears throat> yep. So Vaughn, as you're running, you see that uh, one of these guys they just take out a shotgun and aims right at you. And just as you're about to get shot, Ian gets in front of you, kinda outstretching his arms to protect you 
and he takes the blast of a shotgun right to the back completely breaking uh, several portions of his spine you just see uh, you just see a, a big explosion of blood happening behind you behind him as he looks you right in the eye and you know that there's no way anyone can survive this shot Ian what are your last words wrong and Vaughn takes those words to heart and books it. He can't stop to think right now. Sure. Silas and Vaughn, the two, the two of you meet right at the back door. Silas almost going in, Vaughn going out. And what are you guys doing as you meet up? They killed November. Let's run. Uh, Vaughn doesn't even respond. He's kind of shut down mentally. And that's pretty much what he does. He grabs... Get going by the arm and runs with them. Okay, so the two of you, Silas and Vaughn, starts just running down the street. Uh, behind you, you hear the door, the windows and the doors to the saloon being broken down. Um, people making a commotion, the two of you keep on running. <clears throat> Eventually, it doesn't take too long. Uh, actually, where are you guys running to? Is there any specific location you guys are running to? How about the house of Roscoe that's out of town? Because I figured that it will be a vacant. Sure. As Ooh. long as we're not spotted going that way. Okay, so you start to dash towards there. Um, what kind of role is this? I don't know what kind of role this is. Uh, because you're straight up dashing over there trying to... Uh, trying to do your best to not being shot and just go. Let's say that this is a, just a constitution check for the both of you. Constitution roll, even. I am going to spend my luck on this. Mm, you can't. On this specific check, you cannot spend luck. Okay. You are running. Uh, you and Silas go running down the street towards uh, Roscoe's house. And you see that... It doesn't take too long before those guys realize that you are all uh, uh, running away. And they are on horses, you guys are running on foot. It doesn't take too long before they notice that you are out, and eventually one of them, ju you just hear a very distant shout, one of them say, Here, this way, you're running away. And they start, uh, all of them on their horses start chasing after you. Uh, Silas, you just book it, you keep on running. Uh, however you can. Even though your ears are catching up with you, you're still, you know your life depends on it. This is how you survived all of your life, just being the fastest and the most cunning of them all, and you just run. Vaughn, you, however, start getting out of breath as you, just as you were running, you remember what Silas just told you. November is dead, and you think Ian is dead, and that catches up with you and distracts your mind for just a split second, which is enough to allow the gang to catch up with you and uh, as they're going by you see that a couple horses go uh, by your sights going ahead of you and they start uh, just uh, chasing after Silas and as you're going you see that one of them kind of is hanging down to the side you look back just in time to see uh, them coming with a tomahawk and they just land it right on your neck <laughs> Which isn't Ugh. quite enough to decapitate you, but it sinks almost halfway into your uh, into your neck, and you just you just bleed out in seconds and die. Silas, try as you might, yeah. cunning as you are, you cannot outrun horses. Doesn't take. No, oh, but maybe I can. Can I hide from them? Unfortunately, no. They see you all no. running down the road and they uh, make a circle around you. Uh, all those, I just, however many I said, minus one that died and another that's unconscious. Uh, all those men, they surround you. And you have nowhere else to run now. It's just you and them. And Yeah, I see how many of these people I'm going to take with me. Cause I'll come back. I'll curse you all. Uh, 
they all stop. Silas gets down from his horse. Oh, not sorry, not Silas. <laughs> you don't get down from the horse. Victor Crusoe Ooh. gets gets down from his horse. He gets down from his horse. He uh, walks towards you, and you're just there in the middle of this road, uh, still panting, kind of trying to catch up your breath. He looks you up and down and says, "Huh? So it's this old bag of bones, the one that took in my boy Thomas." I thought you were bigger or meaner. Not an old man. I'm I'm big and mean enough. Well, I think you will see that you're very wrong. What is your name? My name's Silas. Remember it when I come for you. Well, Silas. It must have been one hell of a fight. The one where you took down Thomas. The one where you took down Brody. And least of all, killed Dylan. Remember their names as a burning hell. And say hi to I the devil him. for me. You shoot him? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Make a roll for it. If I'm going, I'm taking him with me. Oh boy. <laughs> nice. Zero eight. God damn, roll your damage. An extreme yeah. success is probably an impaled damage which sort of doubles your damage. Oh my yep. god. Oh! Damn. Oh, 16! <laughs> Woohoo! 16 points of damage. You... It's not enough to kill him. But, you seriously crippled this man. Tell me which way it is that you do so. <laughs> I want to blow his gun hand off. Alright. As you see that he's kind of just trash talking you, you just pull out your gun and shoot him. Uh, you blow off his gun hand, it absolutely explodes into a bloody pulp. Uh, there's nothing left. And just as you do, it doesn't. It, it takes but a split second for everyone who already has their guns trained on you to start a hail of fire that pelts you from every direction all at once. You are shot uh, in your stomach, in your chest, in your legs, in your arms. You collapse to your knees. <coughs> and fall over dead. Yes. Actually, before you die... Uh, Victor just kind of snarls at you and says, You goddamn girl, say hi to the devil for me. And he just stomps you, uh, crushing your head as it does. All of you, all four of you, have died a very horrible, violent death, defending the town of Devil Brook. More victims of the Crusoe gang. Eventually, people talk about how the four of you who had taken down uh, a couple uh, a couple goons from the Crusoe gang in the Roscoe state they were arrested Scheduled to be hanged, but it took they took too long and they were rescued before that. All of you are hailed as not necessarily as heroes, but as martyrs. They remember you and think of you fondly over as time goes on. Just thinking of how you all died to defend them. All of you see that everything around you is a dark void. There's no sound, no nothing. But you seem to be able to understand the fact that you're conscious, you're somewhere. You don't quite understand what's going on. And then you look around and you see each other. All four of you are together in this dark void. And then you hear footsteps coming in closer. And as these footsteps approach you, 
sound suddenly some manner of light illuminates the entire place that you guys are on and you see in front of you a devilishly handsome man with a very very large grin and a smile and a winning uh no winning pose on him quite the good posture he has a very nice tuxedo and he looks at all four of you claps his hands together and speaks to you hello hello it seems your time has come <laughs> you all died welcome to hell i mean not that i didn't exactly expect this i knew it was coming but at least i uh laid a hurting on victor before i left ah victor yes yes Yes, yes, yes. Ah, that Victor. Funny you would mention him. Huh. All four of you seem to have a lot of spunk. Normally, when people die and come here, they just roam this place aimlessly, endlessly. Hardly ever anyone gets to meet me personally. <laughs> you must have had some strong will to live or some strong desire for revenge in your little hearts, don't you? Well, I wouldn't say that uh, making Victor dance wouldn't uh, make me smile a little. I just cross my eyes, and my arms, and I just stare at him. I've read enough to know better than just talk with the devil. Like they said, silent, uh, Silver tongue, but silence is golden. <laughs> oh, don't let those old textbooks deceive you, little man. This is an opportunity of a lifetime, this one that I will present you. You see, I have a tiny little favor I want you all to do to me. And if you do it... <laughs> I'll give you something golden, even more bright than silence. How about coming back to life. How does that sound? I just stay quiet. I just let him let him dangle his his tongue off. Look, so if what? there's anybody among this group that's gonna understand this, you don't get something good for free, so what's the catch? That's it. The catch? Oh the catch. <laughs> Look behind yourselves, then you will see the catch. And as you turn around and you look, you see that there's a host of creatures watching over you. You see several silhouettes on the ground. They seem to resemble uh, humanoid forms that are just cheering and clapping in the background. Just kind of, for some reason, you couldn't hear them before, but now that you see them, you can hear their their loud cheers uh, going on. And right above them, you see other four bigger creatures that don't. They look humanoid, but they also look very devilish. Hmm. They are big demons, and they are looking at you all with a very inquisitive face, and trying to decide what's up with you all. All four of them look different, and but they don't speak, they don't act, they don't do anything. They just look at you with very inquisitive eyes, kind of almost wanting to see you do something. And the man in front of you all says, you see, that's the infernal host, and they will vote on a champion. Whichever one of you gets to impress the host the most gets to come back to life. The others, well, the others are dead. That's the catch. So only one of us can make it. Yes. Yes, only one of you, but still, coming back from the dead, not everyone can claim to be able to do that, can they? Hmm. So, so what's this thing that we have to do? This little favor, you see. There's this little man in a little town called Victor Crusoe. He made a deal with, a, a deal with me. He sold me his soul. And I went to collect, but he cheated out of his deal. 
And you see, I cannot go on without collecting his soul. What will they say of me? What will they think of the devil if I don't come true with my word? <laughs> I can't go into the earth that you all walk by myself. So you will have to do this for me. Kill Silas. Sorry. Not so. Kill Victor. Me? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Kill Victor. And whoever does it the best gets to come back to life. How does that sound? Hmm. I almost did it the first time. I saw. What a nice shot you did there. Too bad. You should have aimed for his heart. But oh well. I bet you're yearning to get a second shot at that, aren't you? What do you say? And far... And how much time do we have? It's not exactly easy to track a gang leader. Well, you have enough time. Don't worry about it. You're not gonna go back to the Earth on a vacation, you see. You will be going to finish a job for me. To bring Drag Victor down into the hells. Once you do that, then you're done. And if you don't do that, well... I have ways of making sure that you do what must be done. Any requirements other than we bring him back? I'm assuming alive, or does he need to be dead? Well, alive or dead, whichever way you prefer, just bring him s his soul to me. Hmm. Honestly, inside my mind, I'm just thinking how how much he's bluffing because if you if the devil itself was so. Uh, failure proof he wouldn't have to ask others to do his job so I'm just listening trying to catch what is true or what's not even if I if I not succeed I know there's something to do because um, it's really hard to get a read on the devil Every, oh. however he speaks he's always grinning he's always grinning his eyes hardly ever move hardly ever blink he's, he's a mask it's nearly impossible to read through him i know um but i hope the last thing to die literally so if you want to try you can make a psychology check i it will require an extreme success what do i have to lose i mean i'm already dead psychology okay. check yep extreme difficulty psychology check could i make yeah. one as well sure I just grin back at him and say, so uh, I see this in my cards coming up. So, what do you say? Do you want to come work for the devil? I promise it will be I, worth well your time. I worked for Phineas, one devil or another. <laughs> what about you, Mr. Lee Kelly? What say you? Eh. Yeah. I pretty much always saw myself as working for you anyway, so... You got a contract? <laughs> and you, Mr. McKittrick? I'm already dead. What have I got to lose? <laughs> That's the spirit. That's the spirit. We see... A bunch of gamblers here. People who know... When they are dealt a bad hand and... When to bluff, when to go for it. <laughs> What about you, Mr. Galen? Wanna come work for the devil? <laughs> well, let me... Dog. Yes. Let's make things more interesting. Mm. My character would not like to do that. But um, I think he's afraid of that. So I'll make... Uh, let me see. I want to test his resolve. How about that for you? How will you do that? I'm looking for something to roll. If I get high enough, I refuse. I say that do not speak the devil. I, I have I know that I deserve something better. If I fail, well, I go to the devil. How about that for a gamble? Just tell me what do you want me to roll. 
Let's <laughs> do. Oh, you resilient little humans, always trying to get your cake and eat it too. <laughs> Ian, mm. roll the hundred on a zero one. You get to have your way. Well, <laughs> let's see if I have balls of steel. No. Well, I guess I don't have the balls for the devil, so let's uh, go. What happens is that as you try and, and keep steadfast, not. Uh, at all buckling down to uh, to him the devil just looks at you and says <laughs> why don't you go and take a walk Mr. Galen see what the future holds <laughs> I normally don't do this but I'll let you, I'll let you catch a glimpse <laughs> here let me show you and then he points off to uh, to your side no one else can see this but you Ian you see that this black void starts to suddenly dim up, gets a little bit brighter and brighter. And then you see the world, the the earth that you have just left. You see everything happening over there. Uh, people going about their lives, but they're, they're very shifty and you can't quite make out what they're saying. You can't see their faces very well. They're mostly just ghosts coming and going. Uh, there's an etherealness to the way that you perceive the world, but at some point things start to get a little bit clearer and you can get some sense of what's uh, actually happening here. You see that uh, some of your colleagues at your workplace, they start to talk to one another. Oh, really? I thought that Mr. Galen was respectful alter. I didn't know that he was, that he was protecting a criminal. Well, serves him right to die like a dog like he did. And your other co-worker says, <laughs> Oh, that's what you get for, you know, doing that kind of dirty work. If he knew better, he would not have left the college. And then you see, your vision goes now through the university, where you got your degree, where you learn how to write uh, for your job, how you learn so... All of those things you know, and you see that all of them, one by one, starts uh, ripping, uh, ripping to shreds everything you have ever written in your life, uh, burning it and disgracing your name, and everyone that has ever known you sees this true knowledge you ever even existed. Nobody wants to be known for reading the literature that a criminal has written, or at least someone that was associated with a criminal, and little by little. The memory that Ian Galen ever existed in this world is forgotten. Even your own family. They stop acknowledging your existence. Whenever they are asked about you, they feign ignorance, say that you're not around anymore. And that's about it. You see your existence from this world being completely erased. And then you get pulled back. The devil about a palm or two away from your face, his devilish grin just looking at you. <laughs> so, that sounds like a rough way to go. They say that people that die and come to hell are tortured for eternity, but what if you had a chance to change that? Change your future? Or have that come to pass? I don't think it's what you want, is it? <laughs> Well, he just don't have, he just don't know how to respond. So he just gnarls and just screams aloud, fuck. And that's the deal. I'm glad you have come to an understanding. You will see, this will work out for me just as it will work out for all four of you. <laughs> so, hunters will be then, coming af going after this prey. Elusive little Victor Crusoe. Drag him down to hell, and one of you will get a chance at coming back to life. The Inferno host behind you all will decide how you're doing. If they see you doing something they like, <laughs> well, you're putting in points for you. 
whoever has the most points by the end gets to come back and make a difference in this cruel little world you all seem to enjoy living in so much. The rest of his gang, Victor's little posse, is no different. All little criminals. The world would not be a worse place if they were to leave and never return. Figure them are all of those nasty little criminals. All of them get free passes. Kill them as you see fit. I don't care. But be warned, the powers up above and down below don't like when you mess around with things, so I would avoid killing innocent. Not that they don't deserve to die one way or another, but still. It's generally frowned upon when my, well, people that are working for me do bad things on my behalf. Besides, I don't think you want to think about all those innocents you're killing. But that's besides the point. All his associates, they get a free pass. Kill them, spare them, makes no difference. Up to you. November and Silas, the two of you will be my coyotes, cunning and sly tricksters, hunting for my prey. Vaughn and Ian, the two of you will be my crows, very smart and resourceful as you scavenge around for the truth and those who are trying to elude me. Now go. I have other things to attend to and I cannot be delayed. <laughs> Good luck to all four of you. <laughs> go on. <laughs> the show must go on. <laughs> and then the devil fades. Everything around you guys fade. And suddenly, your vision fades, you stop being able to see one another. And then, all four of you suddenly feel yourselves becoming a little bit heavier and a little bit corporeal. You start to feel your body once again. And you open your eyes, and you see walls around you. And very above you, you see the night sky, it's starry and slightly clear. You notice that you're inside a coffin. All four of you are inside of a coffin. Let's see if we can get out. Sure. Uh, the coffin is not, uh, doesn't have the lead on, so you can just stand up and you know, climb out of your graves. <sighs> okay. Well, we don't have that jump, I believe. A little too early for our, our wood bed. So, one by one, all of you climb out of your graves, and as you do, you look around, you are in the, ch the local church's graveyard, you have been, uh, you have not yet been buried, they were preparing to bury you, and uh, your graves are still open, but you are, are already down there, and you see... <coughs> Uh, as you look around to one another, you don't recognize each other at first because where previously all of you had a face attached to your bodies, now there's only a floating skull. November Brad. and Silas, there's a floating coyote skull above your heads. Vaughn and yes. Ian, you have a crow skull floating above your heads. Hey, November, at least we got the cool skulls. I mean, I don't know. They're both pretty cool, but yeah. Well, yes, I won't be helping little children anymore by the looks of it. Yeah, depends what kind of kids they are. You see, kind of seemingly adult, and not in his mind, kind of in a in a possessed men mental state. You see a man approaching you in the in this in the night uh, it takes a while before he approaches you before you recognize him and it is the mortician he doesn't seem to even acknowledge that you guys have returned from the dead it seems like there's something taking over his mind and making him 
uh, not realize that you are you. And he approaches all four of you with a big bag on his hand. He puts it on the ground, opens it up, and you see that all of your weapons and other small possessions are there. And four hats. And then the mortician, he stands back up uh, very straight and very unnaturally, and he just says, These are your belongings. They have been brought back to you. Those hats will disguise your true forms to those who are not ready to see who you truly are. But. Oh, good. It you have a method of keeping cover. Those who come into clothes with you will know who you truly are. And don't forget, people in this town have been attempting to bury your dead bodies. Have a good hunt, says the devil. Ha, ha, ha. And then the mortician turns around and starts walking away. You all look down to your things. There is all of your guns, some some ammunition, not a lot, but some. Uh, those hats that apparently can be used to cover your presences, that so other people can't see your skull faces or skull heads. And along with it, there seems to be a little letter addressed by the devil, or rather, addressed by the devil but written by someone else. Hmm. It seems to read. I understand that your journey is going to be tricky and probably dangerous. You will need help, and I'm willing to give it. Remember, those of you who were looking for the catch, this is the catch. The help does not come for free. Enjoy, and use it to the best of your abilities. And just as you all read this message, there seems to be some manner of knowledge that washes over you and suddenly you realize just the things you are all capable of doing now. So, November, Silas, Vaughn, and Ian, you are coyotes and crows. You have gotten special abilities. Those special abilities now uh, are things you can use at any time and it's only available to the four of you, Inferno uh, Hunters. Besides, using those abilities costs humanity. What happens is that sanity is now going to be called humanity. Uh, whenever you do, you know, things, it might go down. Whenever you do other things, it might go up. But if it ever reaches zero, you're out of the game and you can no longer try to fight for your soul. Gotcha. Well, that definitely took a turn. I was simultaneously expecting, but not expecting. <laughs> yeah, I knew something was coming, but wasn't sure what. Yeah. So, oh yeah, you can use those powers whenever. Uh, they cost humanity to use, a variable amount of humanity. And also magic points. Magic points, it's uh, they come back uh, pretty fast. But humanity, however, does not. So... I would be very uh, wary of how you use it. Also, you can keep in mind that um, you all have the ability Inferno or Augur costs 2d10 humanity to use, but whenever you use it, you can ask any question to the devil and he will answer it truthfully and accurately. Hmm. Other than that, you have the those two abilities, Coyote's Prowl and Crow's Flight. Only the Coyotes can use Coyote Prowl, and only the Crows can use Crow's Flight. Uh, just putting that out there. But other than that, every other ability anyone can use. Any four of you can use. So, this is where we're going to end the game for tonight. I hope you all enjoyed. Definitely did. Thank you. That was very entertaining. <laughs> yeah. Also, gosh dang. First time I run a three hour game and it worked out. I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> Apparently, we can make those fit. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, now you guys are gonna be coyotes and crows. You have a target to hunt, and it's up to you how you get to, to achieve it. 
uh, we will just go through some bookkeeping here on things that you guys get because you guys sacrifice some luck and you know some other things to save people in town uh, first Clara who was about to get stabbed and then also the sheriff and the girls uh, in town defending it all of you get 2d6 humanity points uh, I will roll that for you and then that's how many humanity all of you get by the way Humanity is sanity, so you get that many sanity points. Nine for everyone. You get nine points. However, what is rolled individually is luck. All of you can go ahead and roll the ten, and that's how many luck points you regain at the end of the session. And as you do that, I will address you, lovely viewers. Thank you so very much for coming around, watching Coyotes and Crows. This was the first game out of four. We will be playing this throughout this month of Halloween in this little spooky adventure that will be happening. Uh, I hope you all enjoy and keep coming back. Those of you who could not catch it live, don't worry. I'll be uploading this as a YouTube VOD uh, ne uh, this upcoming Sunday. Hello everyone, this is Doug from the future coming in for the editor editing room to say that schedules have changed. The game will actually now, the next game, the second session will be happening on Monday. So yeah, you who are seeing this VOD and it's not Monday the whatever day it is, 11th, you have still got the chance to catch it up live. You can watch it on the, on the Twitches, on the YouTubes like always, and those of you who have are seeing this further away from that, you probably will be able to catch those live on uh, the next few Mondays throughout this month, otherwise you can catch the VODs, or maybe you are already catching up on the VODs, if that is the case, and cool, hope you watch all of them. If not, then, well, at least you got to the end of this one, so that's cool. Anyways, uh, sorry for the confusion, and I hope you all enjoyed the game. Let's keep on doing those more delicious cowboy shenanigans. Bye-bye, bro. Hope you guys are excited for this little adventure, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye, and have a good one.